Next up in chemistry two is topic F, acids and bases. This should be a pretty easy one, I think, really. Just some equations to get our heads around. You'll be fine, don't worry. Right, so I just want to make sure we've got some terminology straight in our head. So when we talk about acids, we're talking about chemicals that have H plus ions. So that's a hydrogen atom that's lost an electron, which just means it's got a positive charge. So this is just the symbol for a H plus ion. Oops, Daisy. Um, bases are chemicals that have OH minus ions. So that's um, just an OH joined together and it's got an extra electron. And then an alkali is a base that can be dissolved. So um, any base that I can get as a liquid, we call an alkali. So bases and alkalis are very, very similar to each other. They're, they've both got this extra OH minus here. Now, hopefully, you might look at this and go, H plus and OH minus. Now, maybe if I put those two things together, I'd end up with something neutral, and we also might end up with something really familiar. I'll let you have a think on that. So I've already used the word pH. Um, Actually, wait, no, I haven't. pH is a really important term. Um, we need to know what it means, basically. So pH is just a scale that we use that lets us um, put a number to how acidic something is. So if we give it a number 0 to 6, it's an acid, and the lower the number, the more acidic it is. If we give it a number 7, it's neutral, so it's neither acid nor alkaline. And if we give it the number 8 to 14, then it's quite alkaline, and the higher the number, the more alkaline or the more basic it is. So, indicators. These are chemicals that change their colour to show pH. And there are two that you need to know about. There's litmus, which only has two colours. And litmus paper can either come in blue or red. Now, if you put blue litmus paper in something and it stays blue, the blueness tells you it's an alkali. If you put red litmus paper into uh, something that's an alkali, it'll turn blue. Now, if you put blue litmus paper into something that's acid, it'll turn red. If you put red litmus paper into something acid, it'll stay red. So you just need to remember that red is the colour for acid and blue is the colour for alkali. It doesn't matter if it changes or not, really. It just matters what colour it is at the end. So is it blue or red? Now, Universal Indicator has more than two colours. As you can see, it's got a colour that should match with every number on the pH scale. So the very, very deep red over here, this is um, a very strongly acidic, so that gives a zero or a one. Green is pH seven, which is neutral. And then the bluer we get, the more alkaline it is. So these are our very strong alkalis up here. This would be a weak alkali, neutral, weak acid, strong acid. So we just need to try and remember that the green is neutral really. And then how far to the red or to the blue tells you how strong of an acid or an alkali. It's pretty easy, you're normally given a scale, stick some drops in, see what color it goes and decide what it is. So neutralization, um, when we add an alkali and an acid, if we add them in the right amount and their pH then becomes 7, they neutralise each other. And that's a neutralisation reaction. Now, if we are using a, so for our base, if it's got a name that's sort of ends with an oxide or ends with hydroxide, this is the equation for the reaction. So we could have sodium oxide, sodium hydroxide, potassium oxide, potassium hydroxide. They would all end up with an equation that just looks like this general name here. So the general equation for a neutralization is acid plus base goes to salt plus water. Now for those of you doing the higher, remember how I was looking at the H plus and the OH minus? Well, we need to know it in terms of those. Now, oops, Daisy, our OH minus and our H plus, these are our ions, and they can react reversibly. So we need to put in the arrow that looks like this one here and they can go to make H2O, because I've got two hydrogens and an oxygen. And this is a happy thing. But they can split up again to give me my H plus and my OH minus, so it's reversible. 
Um, so basically, we need to think about how pHs can change. So if I've got an acid and I add some alkali, the pH of the... Oh, no, I've got that wrong. I can't even read my own slides. If I add acid to an alkali, the pH will decrease because it will get nearer to 7. If I add alkali to an acid, the pH will go towards 7, so that means that the pH will increase. Just need to try and think of it as a sliding scale. And if you add a bit from one end, it'll slide it over towards the middle, really. How will that affect the number? So I said uh, oxides and hydroxides have the equation I showed you before, but bases can also be carbonates. So if I've got a name like sodium carbonate, I have a slightly different reaction. Because the fact that the second word of the name has got carbon in it tells me that I'm going to have to have some carbon in my equation. So for this one, I have acid plus carbonate goes to salt plus water, so that stays the same. And then we just add in some carbon dioxide. So our old standby carbon dioxide. If you've got some carbon floating around, you can probably make carbon dioxide. Now, hopefully you remember how to test for carbon dioxide. And I hope you're all screaming inside your heads that we would bubble it into lime water and it would go milky or cloudy coloured to show us that there was carbon dioxide present. Okay, so this last bit is the bit that can be a little confusing. Now I've mentioned that we make salts. Um, salt is just a type of chemical and we need to be able to predict what salt you will make depending on the uh, name of the acid and the base and it's really easy. The first name of the salt comes from the base or your carbonate. So if you have something called sodium hydroxide or copper oxide, calcium carbonate or ammonia, these are all bases. And we just take the first part of the name. So from sodium, we take sodium. For copper oxide, we're going to take copper. Calcium carbonate, we take calcium. And that's just going to be the first part of the name of our salt. The second name comes from the acid. And you'll be able to tell it's an acid because it'll say acid in the name. So like here, we have hydrochloric acid. So in that case, it would make a chloride salt. For sulfuric acid, it would make a sulfate. For nitric, it would make nitrate. And for phosphoric, it would make a phosphorus salt. So all we do then is take those two words. Um, so my example at the bottom is I've put, if I have potassium hydroxide with nitric acid, I would make potassium nitrate but we can do it for any of them, if we just take the first pair. So if I had sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid, then I would make sodium chloride. If I had copper oxide with sulfuric acid, I would make copper sulfate. You just need to pick the words out and squash them together, really. It's like swapping partners. And that's the hard bit for this, but it's not too bad once you just remember the rules. So the acid gives you the second part of the name and Whatever you're reacting with it, whether it's a hydroxide, an oxide, or a carbonate, it doesn't matter because you just take the name of the metal that's before it, or the first word. And if it's ammonia, then it just becomes ammonium at the beginning. Okay? So that is it for this unit, but remember, if you've got any questions, do not hesitate.